Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to another Fallout 4 mod review. Now it has been an absolute treat on the Nexus lately. We have been getting just so many mods, not just mods, but weapon mods, which are of course my favorite. And I'm just kind of in a bit of a backlog. So we have a bunch of weapon mods that will be coming out every single day for the upcoming week. And today we have a very special release and that is the Combined Arms Expansion Pack by Nova Finch. Now, if you're not familiar with Combined Arms, it is an absolutely massive weapon pack full of a bunch of modern tactical weapons, some that many people would be familiar with, like the Barrett 50 Cal or the M249 Saw. And now there is an expansion pack that adds three new weapons, a bunch of new features, and a bunch of attachments to the old weapons from the original pack. This thing is absolutely incredible, and it comes with some really groundbreaking technology that I haven't seen in other mods before. I've been watching this thing develop for a long time on Discord, and I am super excited for its unexpected release today. This thing is absolutely incredible. So let's go ahead and start with everything you'll be getting in this expansion pack. The biggest thing available in this pack is there will be three new weapons. First of all is the Mark 12 SPR, which is going to be an AR-15 platform style DMR variant, more of a marksman rifle. This thing is really intended to be used at long range, though with the weapon attachment system, you can really kit it to do just about anything you'd like. It adds another AR-15 type platform for us, but a little bit more unique from all of the other generic M4s that we see on the Nexus. The next weapon is the Makarov PM. This is a classic Russian pistol that many of you should be familiar with. We do have a Makarov mod out there, but this one will have a lot of the features integral to the combined arms pack and will of course be compatible with all of the changes made in this mod and all of their leveled lists. And then finally, we have the FNP90. Another one that we have a mod of already, but again, this is part of the combined arm pack. It reduces your ESP amount. You now have it all in one nice pack. And this P90 is absolutely beautiful and does bring some stuff to the table that no other weapon has. And we'll go ahead and talk about that now. The P90 and the Makarov feature a new system, which I have yet to see anywhere else. And that is that the bullets shown in any of the transparent magazines are accurate to the amount of bullets that should be there. If you have a 50 round mag and you shoot 25, there will be 25 bullets left in the magazine. And that is absolutely incredible. You can watch the bullets tick down as you're shooting them. And that is just insane and something I never thought possible for the Fallout 4's engine. Now, each of these weapons are going to feature a ton of different attachment options, including reticle customization. So every single reflex sight does have eight different options for the reticle that you can choose, including support for the scope overlay framework, which allows for the longer scopes to have their own custom reticles as well. All of these weapons will be added to the leveled list and appropriate weapons will spawn on gunners and raiders and stores. Additionally, in this pack, there are a number of fixes to the original weapons from Combined Arms, as well as some leveled list improvements. There are some new attachments for some of the weapons, a lot of bug fixes, quality of life improvements, and again, that new reticle support featured in this expansion pack. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and check out the finer details of each of the new weapons, starting with the stats. We'll go ahead and start small and move our way up. Starting with the Makarov PM, we have a base damage of 22. It shoots the newly added 9x18 Makarov rounds, has a fire rate of 0, I have a feeling that's a bug on my end, a range of 59, an accuracy of 70, a weight of 2.9 pounds, and a value of 122 caps. For the FNP90, we have a base damage of 20. It's shooting the 5.7x28mm rounds, has a fire rate of 150, a range of 47, an accuracy of 59, a weight of 6.4 pounds, and a value of 113 caps. And then finally, for the Mark 12 SPR, we have a base damage of 49. It's shooting 5.56 rounds, has a fire rate of 66, a range of 125, an accuracy of 92, a weight of 9 pounds, and a value of 676 caps. Now let's go ahead and talk about custom animations. Each of these weapons does come fully equipped with custom reload animations, as well as a variety of other animations like sprinting, grenade throwing, and melee. And some of them have some really cool animation features. Let's go ahead and start with the PM Makarov. Now something important to note, like I said, it does show the accurate amount of bullets. So if I shoot two bullets, when we reload, the empty magazine will not be empty. It will still have some bullets left in it. It may be hard to tell with how fast we're moving, but I'll have some slow-mo clips right after this to show it off in action. Now, 
Now the P90 also comes with that feature. We'll go ahead and show off the reload and you can see the bullets tick down as we fire right now. So as you can see, as you shoot, the bullets do come all the way down in this cool transparent magazine. Very, very nice. And then finally, we have our Mark 12 SPR. We'll go ahead and show that off. Pretty standard reload, but still beautiful nonetheless. Now, being that these are modern weapons, they are, of course, going to come with a ton of different attachment options. So sit tight because there is a lot to go over here. We'll go ahead and start with the Makarov in the receiver category. Here we have our standard combined arms framework of receivers. We have our worn receiver, the lightweight part kit, the high durability materials, the improved internals, the factory condition, the sporting purpose receiver, the RARAN auto trigger group, which is going to allow this thing to fire in full auto, and then the KGB spec receiver, I'm not gonna attempt to pronounce it, which gives you a max damage of 34. We do have some barrel length options starting with 3.68 inches. We have the 3.01 in two different variations, which will give a different texture to the slide. We have the 6.2 inch Dolgo, the 7.4 Volga, the 6.7 inch 6P9, which does completely change the style of the Makarov here, including its iron sights. And then the 12.1 inch 6P9 Tashina, which is going to have a built-in suppressor, and that thing looks absolutely beautiful. For grips, we have the Factory Bakelite, we have the Spetsnaz Black Grip, the Skeletal Pistol Stock, and the Heavy Stock, which is going to have the built-in holster. For magazines, we have our standard 9x18 Makarov, and then the standard 9x19 Parabellum, which is going to change it to 9x19 for the ammo type. And then we have drum mags in each different ammo type. For sights, we have the standard iron sights. We have the 6P9 offset, which is just going to lift up the offset if you're using the 6P9 receiver. We have the Vortex Venom reflex sight, the Hollow Sun holographic sight, the Barska reflex, the Aimpoint Micro T1 reflex sight, the EKP9 Cobra reflex sight, the OKP7 Calaminator sight, the EOTech holographic sight, the Elcan Spectre optical sight, and the Luapold 8x scope because, you know, you need that on a pistol whose slide does move back and forth. And then we have the NVG night vision optics, which again, why you need that on a pistol, I don't know, but you can do it. So yeah, do it. For the sake of testing, we'll go ahead and equip something like the Barska Reflex here so that we can show off the different reticles that you can add later on in the menu. But first, we do have some muzzle options. We have the option for no muzzle, a recoil compensator, the security suppressor, the operative suppressor, and the NKVD wrapped suppressor. For stickers, we have the option for no sticker, a Minutemen sticker, Brotherhood of Steel, Institute, CIT, NCR, Enclave, Vault Boy, Cooler Vault Boy, <laughs> Bethesda, Nexus Mods, Black Mesa Research Facility, Lambda, Mizraya Armory, MIT, Fringe Division, Shield, SG-1, Venture Industries, I quite like that one, Outer Heaven, Fox, Foxhound, MSF, Diamond Dogs, Mr. Chief, KGB, Task Force 141, Pasta Pupper, Snack, Pain, Meat, Xavier, Scum of the Earth, Exotic Engram, and Gun Sticker Incarnate. Whole lot of references here, but you can really take this thing out to pretty much any fan base that you're a part of. We do have some damage modifiers from negative 50% all the way up to positive 100%. We have under barrel options for a flashlight and a combination laser and flashlight. For paint, we do have some options. We have the factory finish, woodland, the Caspian lowland, the taiga forest, the tiger, and the, I'm not gonna try to pronounce this, but it looks like a snakeskin. Then we have those reticle styles, which are going to be A through H. So they don't exactly describe to you what it looks like, but they are different. <laughs> So you do have eight different options you can play with those in game to see what exactly you can get out of each red dot. And then finally, we have our ammo types. So once you've chambered the ammo type of your choosing, you get to choose low quality, bulk, surplus, hollow point, armor piercing, increased velocity, over pressure, quake maker, full metal jacket, match grade, snake shot, like a shotgun, the radically invasive projectile, the 
armor penetrating Sabo, the zirconium coated incendiary, and the impact explosive. So you have a whole lot of different options here. They're all pretty self-explanatory, but if not, they have descriptions which tell you exactly what each round type does. With the video already getting pretty long, we'll try to rush through these last few attachments so we can move on to our damage test. We have the same type of receiver options for the P90, worn up through the different damage modifiers. We do have some barrel options for the factory, extended, carbine, and assault. Assault just being absolutely ridiculous looking. We do have some stock options with the factory issue, the tactical fly strap, the CQC shoulder pad, the extended shoulder pad, and the heavy cheek rest. We do have some magazine options. We have the 5.7 and the 22 micro magnum. For sights, we have a lot of the same sight options that we had on the Makarov, lots of different red dots and hollow sights, including a couple of different longer range options. For muzzles, we have the factory issue muzzle brake, along with a bunch of other different muzzles and compensators, and of course, some suppressor options, including a quite large heavy suppressor there. That would be fun to pair with the super long barrel. We have those same sticker options as before. We do have an attachment right option, which will be the option for nothing, a flashlight, a one milliwatt laser, or a five milliwatt laser. We have damage modifiers, negative 50 through positive 100. We have a barrel cover, which will have no option, extended handguard, or the quad rail. For ammo type, we have the similar ammo allotment with low quality, bulk, surplus, hollow point, all those other variations that we had before. We do have paint options with matte black, forest spray, woodland, olive drab, desert network, and again, not going to pronounce that, but it's a splinter type camo, Antarctic outpost, serpent guard, event horizon, and unitology. We do have a left rail as well for more laser attachments, and then reticle styles if you do choose to put on a red dot. And then finally, we move on to the Mark 12 SPR. Again, same style with receivers. You can choose worn through factory, giving different amounts of damage with each upgrade. We have barrel lengths. We have the factory, carbine, defender, assault, heavy, and integrally suppressed. For stocks, we have factory issue, compact, removed, ultralight, tactical, and then SOCOM, and close quarters battle rifle, and designated marksman. For magazine, you can change this thing to be 556, 300 blackout, or 50 Beowulf. For scopes, we have the options for iron sights, a bunch of different red dots, and some long range scopes as well. For muzzles, we have the option for no muzzle, a handful of different muzzle brakes and compensators, as well as suppressors. We have the same sticker options as before. We have damage modifiers negative 50 through 100. We do have a top rail for the scope that we have equipped, which will add on flashlights or lasers. We do have the different ammo types, same as before. Different paint options, we have the standard finish, sandstorm, forest drab, woodland recon, digital desert, digital pattern, jungle canopy, Anchorage, Alaska, USMC, blue tiger stripe, and demon. We do have the attachment option for a flashlight or laser of your choosing as well as reticle options down here at the very end. And then really quick before we move on to our damage tests, I mentioned recently in another tactical modern weapon video that I wanted to see how many laser sights a mod author could put on a weapon, and I think this pack currently takes the cake. With this P90, I was able to get on a total of seven lasers. So yeah, anybody out there wants to try to beat that, I like to see you try, but seven is the current record that I've seen on a single weapon mod, and that just looks beautiful. All right, and finally we move on to the damage tests. Now I'm just going to test each of these weapons individually with their base stats, as I feel like the modern tactical weapons often get a bad rap for being overpowered and not immersive in the damage scale of things, but I think these fit pretty well in the sandbox. So I'm going to show off each of them with no perks and no attachments just to show you how they perform on our standard death claws here. Let's start with the PM Makarov. As you can see, this thing doesn't do crazy damage. I'd say this fits right alongside the damage base of, say, the Deliverer. And then with that, I think it's going to take a little over four magazines to put down a Deathclaw. Not too shabby. Let's see how we do with something like this P90. Now, ignore the lasers in the sight, it is the base damage. 
Now, to be fair, the P90 does have a 50 round magazine and it's shooting 5.7, which is known to be armor piercing. So it does put down that death claw pretty quick, but I expect this to be a high level weapon. Finally, we have the SPR shooting a 5.56 caliber rounds. And it puts down that death claw in less than a magazine. Keep in mind, it is a higher caliber and will be found later in the game than something like a low level Makarov. So yeah, guys, that is the Combined Arms Expansion Pack. A whole lot included in this thing, and if you're already a fan of Combined Arms, which is such a great weapon pack to begin with, this is a must-have expansion as it includes a ton of cool features along with those brand new weapons. I highly encourage you to go try this one out for yourself. It really is very, very cool. So with that, if you want to try it for yourself, there will be links down in the description below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a rating. Subscribe if you haven't already for more videos just like this, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace! And really quick, I'd like to make a shout out to all of our patrons. Your donations are greatly appreciated and really help to support the channel and videos just like this one. So again, thank you.